But I've also been asked to introduce the couple that we're privileged to have in the house this evening to share with us their own depth of joy, experience, and laughter in their own marriage. Um, we have in our midst this evening Pastor and Pastor Mrs. George and Eno Unogo. And I would like to, at this time, introduce Pastor Eno Unogu, who is going to share with us before we have them as a couple. Pastor Mrs. Eno Abasi Unogu is a chartered insurance practitioner, ACII London. She also holds a BA honors and a master's degree in public administration from the University of Calabar and the University of Lagos, respect, respectively. She has served severally both in the public service of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the private sector of the economy. She's widely traveled. She currently works as the managing director and chief executive officer of Jordan's Global Insurance Brokers Limited. She's actively involved in insurance education and lectures on reinsurance locally and abroad. She's a lover of people. She's dedicated to a life of bringing hope and dignity to the downtrodden. And to actualize her passion, she's the coordinator of Gina Hope Alive Foundation, a non-governmental -government organization dedicated to bringing relief to women and vulnerable children in difficult family circumstances. She's also a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and is an ordained minister, pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. She's a relationship coach and a marriage counselor. She's happily married to her friend, Pastor George Unogu, and they're blessed with three lovely children. I'd like us to give a promised land welcome to Pastor Mrs. Eno Abasi Unogu. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody. I actually like it here. I like your church. Pastor Femi, can I be coming to your church? <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Maureen and Pastor Femi. I thank you for the privilege to stand here and to address this august meeting taking place in February. Um, before I start, I'll just tell us a story of what happened to one of my uncles. One of my uncles. You know, one day he was like 90 year old <clears throat> and he was driving you know he had exceeded the speed limits this my uncle is a british man i look british don't i anyway so he sped past the cops that you know were on patrol and since he had exceeded the speed limits they decided to chase after him so he drove like Jehu, and eventually the cops caught up with him. And he came down, and they said, oh man, you're old. You've exceeded the speed limits, and you were just riding like Jehu. If you tell us one good reason why we should not book you, then we'll let you go. So he now looked at them and said, you know, 40 years ago, 
a policeman took my wife. So when I saw you guys chasing after me, I thought you were bringing her back to me. So I just, just had to fly like Jehu. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, 40 years ago, they took my wife and I thought you were bringing her back. So I think that said something about the wife he was talking about. Anyway, it's a joke. That's not the news. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to pray and then we will talk. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for this privilege to come into your presence. Thank you because you're here. Thank you because you always delight in prospering yours. Thank you because tonight you have come here to prosper us, to build us up, to give us joy in our marriages. Tonight, Lord, we surrender to your leadership. We ask that you speak through me tonight. Not words of men's wisdom, but words that comes from your throne of grace. Words that I will edify, that will lift up your children, that will encourage, that will correct. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. So will I have my slides because I'm going to talk from my slides. Praise the Lord. Tonight my duty for the next um, 30 minutes is to talk on the subject happily ever after. When I saw the topic, I said, wow, Pastor Femi has given me a tough job because I have to do this work in 30 minutes. And to me, that's almost um, a mission impossible. So I would make a proposal to Pastor Femi, and then he will pay me, and then I will do a good job, or a better job. Praise the Lord. Now, and I want to ask us, um, I just want to profile um, the audience tonight. How many people have been married from between one year and five years? Just shoot out your hands. One year and five years. Okay, they are in, in the minority. Okay, five to ten years. Let's go. Five to ten years. Okay, 10 to 20 years, 10 to 20 years, Pastor Femi, uh, I thought I'm the Methuselah in this place, okay, 20 to 40 years, let's go, uh -huh. please clap for them, just clap for them. In fact, please stand up and be, and be recognized. Hmm? 20 to 40. All correct. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. These men and women, they deserve honor. Eh? It's not an easy something. Oh. Eh? Me, age next uh, anniversary is 30 years. So tonight, I'm, I'm just going to share with us um, my journey of 30 years, next anniversary, 1st December 2020, if the Lord tarries, and also in my experience as a busybody in other people's matters of preparing them for marriage and sometimes troubleshooting when there are issues, and sometimes I'm just minding my business gingerly. And I see the issues on Punch Online. And I actually have um, a chat group. I call it my marriage gym. So sometimes some people bring issues for us to gym it out um, at the marriage gym. So I'm really going to share some experiences. 
and you know some of the exposures I've got dealing with people who are married. So how am I going to do with this thing? Am I reading from my back or from my front? Eh? That one I can't see even with my four eyes. <laughs> okay. So by way of introduction, I deal with people who plan to get married. And sometimes the attitude that they bring to the counseling table because I counsel people for prepare them for church marriage, Christian marriage. So they present um, with this attitude that, oh, you know, we're going to get married and um, we believe God that, you know, once we get married, everything is going to be okay. Why do I say that? Because sometimes when I say, let's sit down and talk about real life issues and it's like they just look at me like oh, this mama must be having how can she tell us that a time can come that we may not like to be talking to each other how can she be telling us that ah, sometimes i wouldn't like to be touched and have sex you know that kind of thing when i say have you done it some will say no we have not some say eh, once, you know. And when I say let's talk, sometimes they'll be sleeping. But you know, when they leave the counseling area, you know, they are with their friends, you know, they are doing the selfies, they are doing the Instagram, and you know, they are going for the photo shoots, and they can even travel to Abekuta to order the Ashoibi and stuff like that. So they do all those preparations for the wedding. Praise the name of the Lord. And the, the feeling is, ah, there is no way between the two of us. Mama, between the two of us, it's not possible, that thing you are telling us. So they believe that after the fairy tale wedding, you know, the pictures, so nice, everything turned out, the page boys, you know, the groomsmen and, you know, the followers. That's, in fact, I think there's a competition. The more beautiful my wedding ceremony, the more beautiful my marriage is gonna be. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My research has, however, shown that and it's established that most marriages that break up, they break up in the first 10 years. First 10 years, that's the, you know, the next 20 years, people still divorce, you know, 40 years. I actually read an account of a couple after they've been married for like 80 years. So that means 70 years, I mean, they were like their 90s. They now came to their priests. And say we want to get divorced. And the priest, the priest say, Are you real? You want to divorce? They say, Yes. So they say, Tell me. After 60 years, they say we were waiting for our last child to die before we divorced. We didn't want to hurt our children. So that means for as long as they were married, they were nothing, you know. The thought of divorce, but you know, they didn't want to. So they waited their children. So their last child died like 72. So they said, okay, now it's time. Praise the name of the Lord. So most marriages break up in the first 10 years. The ones that will break up, praise the name of the Lord. So I discussed tonight, it's timely. It can be an eye opener for those it is meant for, it may evoke a paradigm shift so it can enhance the quality of the marriage and to others may actually save a marriage. So the objective is to share some tips and principles for optimum marriage management. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, living happily ever after. We all know that this is a stock phrase used in fairy tales to signify a happy ending to a story. 
In love stories, you remember Cinderella, Cinderella after all she had gone through, you know, in the hand of the wicked stepmother and her stepsisters. And eventually she met Prince Charming and, you know, they lived happily ever after. But I believe I'm talking, you know, to real people. Flesh and blood like moi and thou, you know. So, for fairy tales, romantic novels, and stuff like that, happily ever after is always the end. So, we like it. We like it. How did it end? Even, um, what do they call this our own? Nollywood. You know, you go series one, two, three, four, five. How did it end? Happily ever after the wicked mother-in-law was eventually dead and they continued happily ever after. So, on this subject, happily ever after, I have two news. I have good news and I have bad news. So which one do you want first? Huh? Good news. If I tell you the good news, then I tell you the bad news at the end. It will, it will make the dinner not to be sweet. Mm. So I, I will give the bad news and then I have the good news. Then the appetite will be good. So let's go. What's the bad news? Gone, guy. The bad news is that happy, happy ever after is never guaranteed. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, when you collect the wedding gifts, the envelopes, the alerts, it's not part of the deal. You will not give a card, a, you know, a gift card. I think we use gift cards now in this environment that we say happy ever after is guaranteed after today 22nd february 2020 because it's been researched and proved that marriage just like any other thing in life begins to degrade immediately the couple say i do there's a young lady that uh, she does events like this she's an events planner and she told me one day, said, Mama, know what? I was doing an event, you know, wedding. And then the bride was brought to the back room when they were getting ready after the uh, wedding, the photography session. So she was brought to the back room and her face was actually blooded. The guy had slapped her right before reception, oh. This is a true story. I stand before God. So she said they brought her face. You know, the guy had elbowed her. So they now had to like powder her, you know, prepare her, you know, for them to go and, you know, do the dance. And I said she, she went to do the dance. She said, Mama, we had to do damage control package, powder, cover up, so that she can go for the reception. This is in Lagos, Nigeria, or not, you know, praise the name of the Lord. So just after I do, some people actually experience that. I know, and I have a personal friend, somebody very close to me. Her marriage started dying. In fact, it died on the night of the wedding from... The honeymoon, the, the husband actually took off and went for the honeymoon all by himself. Just over a little disagreement, you know. And that marriage did not survive. Praise the name of the Lord. Marriage failure statistics is horrendous. America, 40 to 50% in 2019. That means out of every 10 person that gets married, five, you know, will go their separate way. And out of that statistics, some will remarry. And out of those that will remarry, 70% will, you know, divorce again. 
In Europe, Portugal has the honor of having the highest, 69%. Um, Africa, as usual, we don't have statistics, but we can guess. In Niger, uh -huh, we, read, we read the, the gossip columns, you know. Maybe two in ten, three in ten. But we know this is, even if it was statistically established, we know that a whole lot of social, cultural things go in there to make me to just stay put and maintain. So, that means even for the seven, that may just be staying. Like Pastor Maureen said, they are just enduring the experience. But tonight we are talking about living happily ever after, which is God's intention for us. Scripture says, Jeremiah 29, 11, the thoughts I have towards you are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. What's the expected end of everybody in a marriage? To have fun, to have joy, to love going back to my home at the end of the day, to look forward to meeting you know, my view at the end of the day. My place is the place I love to be. Not the office. Praise the name of the Lord. Which by the grace of God I've enjoyed in the past 30 years. I just love my home. I always tell them. I said I've seen hotels. I've seen five stars. Maybe close to seven stars. But a hotel is a hotel. They smell the same. One corridor room to the left, room to the right, you go inside, a bed, TV, shower, jacuzzi, if it's a presidential suite, a sitting place, others is just your bed and space to put your suitcase, it's hotel. And it's fine, or some of them fine, but I still love my downtown address in Surulere, Nigeria. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, in the church, it has crept in. I've presided over weddings. Three months after the, you know, they come. You are not doing again. I say you will do. You will do. In fact, I say you are going to do. Because that the Jews say, once you carry her, you carry her. Is this not what I told you? Say, we are not doing. In fact, they will leave the church. I say, bye. Adios, amigo. It has crept into the church. So happily ever after, to those constituency, it was just a fairy tale. They had a fairy tale wedding. But at the end of the day, nothing to show for it. Good news now, guys. Good news. Good news is it is possible. But with a big but. A big what? Please. Can, you, can everybody read the screen? The green part? Please, let's read together. One, two, go. But if it must happen, it is up to... It is up to... Praise the name of the Lord. The good news is it is well in the realm of possibility. It can happen. And it does happen for real life people like you and I. And you know what? They don't have to be born again. no. Hmm? Many people who have fairy tale ending, they are not born again. Why? God is no respecter of persons. Everything in life responds to principles and laws. This law governing everything in life, including your marriage. If you keep to the laws, the principles, you get it right, you get what you want. That's why I say, if it must happen, it is up to somebody. So tonight, I'm just going to share with us, I don't know, do I have more than 10 minutes? We are going to breeze through 
seven, six principles, laws that governs marriage. The list is not exhaustive. That's why I'm saying it's not a 30 minutes talk. Maybe God will create an opportunity for us to sit down and break it down. But I'll just share with us some principles, laws around marriage that are in your hands that if you play them by the rule, then you will get the results that you desire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go. I'm sure we've read this slide. I wish I had the control. Next slide, please. So I will go. The law of agreements or principles. I'll call it law. I'll call it principle. The law of agreements. The law of intentionality. The law of seasons. The law of nurture. The law of sacrifice. And the law of understanding who you marry praise the lord you know before people get married when they come to me i say go and know the person but once you say i do what we can only do is damage control and so you have to know understand who you have carried praise the lord now the first law is the law of agreements the first principle of Marriage as God enunciated in the Garden of Eden is that the two of them shall become one. A fusion of souls. Praise the Lord. That's why God does not play around when people, you know, meddle with sex out of marriage. Because when a man marries a woman and the two of them consummates that marriage by having a sexual relationship they become one fused together they are supposed to be in unity of one mind in agreement with each other praise the name of the lord concerning the journey they have chosen taking it upon themselves because marriage is not for children by the law of this land you're supposed to have reached the age of consent, 18. Of course, by the law, not the law that governs what some people do in some regions of this country. Press the name of the Lord. Amos 3, 3 says, can two work together except they agree to go on that journey? A lot of people conduct their marriages as if they were forced. In fact, some of them were actually forced. So there's no agreement. But for a couple that we have a marriage that will last and it will be happily ever after, the two of them have to sit down and reach definite agreements on issues and agree that we will agree on this marriage. We will agree even when we disagree. Because sometimes it's one couple I've said I have to go and ask that question, but I haven't. One time ago, many years ago, when we were in Freedom Hall, we went for a couple's day out with Pastor Tony. So, um, one of the sisters, you know, I call her auntie, came out and said, oh, she wanted to appreciate her husband. By that time, I think they must have been married for about 25, 30 years. And she said she wants to appreciate him that for all those Yes, they've been married. They have never had a disagreement. And I say, hey, that time, I think I just been married maybe five years. I say, Chai. So I was listening. I said, is she telling a lie? Oh, she said, and of course the guy was there, so he came. I said, yes, that for the length of time they've married, they've never had a disagreement. Praise the name of the Lord. I think tonight when I get home, I'll call her. I say, you remember that thing you said? Was it true? Is this still happening to you today? Because I was just pinching myself. Well, that time, my darling was sitting behind, beside me, and I was just pinching myself. I said, 30 years, no disagreement. Wow. Praise the name of the Lord. So to live happily ever after, the couple have to reach agreement on fundamental issues of life. Set goals on how to manage the relationship. For example, 
Because I've heard somebody say, ah, my husband, when he quarrel with me, one month he won't be talking to me. In fact, I heard one, two days ago, the person says, six months, my husband will not be talking to me because I did something. Not that he has even told her what she's done. You know, how should we know that she has, she's in the wrong side of the law is because he has stopped talking to her. So as a couple, we should sit down and say, listen, we will not always agree. Ask my darling here now. A lot of times we don't agree. <laughs> but that we don't agree can't stop us talking to each other now. You settle those things. Little foxes, really, kills the vine of love. The vine of love is so tender. Go and read it in the book of Songs of Solomon. Say, catch us the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vine. It was talking about love. He said, because the vine of love is very tender. Praise the name of the Lord. Simple things like that. That we will quarrel a little bit. We will see it together. We will sleep in the same bed and do all the done things. When we finish in the morning, we will thrash out the issue. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's got nothing to do with us. We only have divergence of opinion. Pastor, if you are clown, every time you say, you say it's okay, darling. Darling, it's okay. It's just they agree. Okay, okay. What kind of life is so? Excitement. No differences. And then your children, everybody will just say, okay, okay. Praise the name of the Lord. The law of agreement is vital. Agree. We agree that we will respect our parents even if we are quarreling. Don't because you quarrel with me, you go and insult my mother the day you see her. You take the phone. You didn't train this year child very well. Go let your mother teach you how to treat a man. Your father will teach you how to treat a woman. Go. So you agree on these things. That we will have disagreements, divergences of opinion. But that should not affect the way we feel about each other. Praise the name of the Lord. I can talk about love agreements all day. Let's go on. I have, how many minutes do I have? MC. You are not listening. You. If you are married. You marry? Eh? Is he married? You marry? Where your wife? He left, he left her for London visiting your wife. Were you visiting your wife in London? Catch that. So how many minutes do I have? Answer the question. Eh? Five. All right. I have five points. One per minute. Law of intentionality. You must be intentional about finding fulfillment in your marriage. I see, that, see me standing. Me, I have purpose of see him sitting there. Oh, darling, darling to the rapture. That's his name. Eh? When we were in that church, what do they call that our church? City of David. Pastor Trevor used to say, he said, darling, is old school. So how can you be calling yourself darling? I said, now nah, you're only that. Eh? I borrow it from home and I like it, you know. So, you have to be intentional. That I see this marriage, I'm going to enjoy it. Whether the devil like it, it is yes. Intentionality. And it's a personal decision that you make. We have to be intentional about the relationship. Praise the name of the Lord. Is being deliberate and purposeful. Some people go into marriage. I see them this day. I told the last couple that came before me. The last, I said, you see you people. The way you people are just doing marriage this day. This job, if I was paid to do it. I for don't resign since. Go to law school and become a lawyer. We will be talking about anybody about going to get married. Because you people are not intentional. Because when they come, my first question is. Why do you want to marry? Say, hey, we finished school now. Finish it, call. Hey, so, uh, my mother say, uh, 
that uh, all my sisters are married, all my friends, all my classmates, in fact, they are all married. Is that why you want to be married? No intention. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Please go on. Love intentionality. You have to be intentional about that union. That I'm going to be happy. I'm going to make you happy even if you don't want to be. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I sign a great die for you. Even if you don't want to be happy, when you see me happy, hey, you say you'll arrange yourself very well. Praise the name of the Lord. Because it's adults. You've reached a stage in your life. I want to go in and I'm going in with this person. Or I found myself with this person anyway, however we, we got here. Because some people, you give them belly, you marry her. Is that a good reason to marry somebody? That's a very bad reason. You shouldn't even marry her. Give you belly. Please, your, all your proteges, all of them, tell them. Give you belly, wrong candidate. Cancel it. To the Lord, we say three times, men are married. Then you can go ahead. Press the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then the law of seasons. This is vitally important. That's of me. I'll come and do seminar here on the seasons, the cycles of life. Life responds to seasons. Season of a child, season of a toddler, adolescence. I have some in my house. OH, like I am now, 60 years, still counting. Praise the Lord. And as the years pile up, the effects, the emotions, the emotions of that, those seasons will affect your marriage. So you should know, in my marriage, which season are we? First 10 years, I tell you, pressure and pressure again. Trying to adjust to in-laws, to this man, to this woman, make a living, have a career, build a business, raise children, look for children if they are not forthcoming. Precious. And meanwhile, you are trying to be one. Season. You know, sometimes you come back. Welcome. He has had a bad day. His boss has threatened to sack him. You know, so I agree to you, not go and sack somebody. What happened? It's the job. And it has affected the marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to know, this guy is struggling. Oh. He's just left home. Oh. He's just been sacked. Oh. Blah, blah, blah. Then first 10 years pass. The next 20 years, I'm sure the people that stood up here, all of them are 45 and above. When they turn 45, 50, they'll be sitting. What have I done with my life? What have I done with my life? I'll soon retire. I've not built the house. I've not. How are you, darling? I'm okay. Ah, you won't talk to somebody. The man is going through a thing. I will tell you the one that happened in our house. I had even married her. So one day, my uncle died, so we went. So after the, you know, burial, we were sitting in the house. Meanwhile, before then, I have heard rumors. It wasn't even GSM days. So my father now called us and said, you see this, your mother, she's just doing this and this and that. So after she, he had said this story, I now said, hey, is that why you have a girlfriend? He said, yes. Because I did not enjoy my life. And this your mother is not even helping matters. So I have to start to enjoy my life. No one was worrying him, man. 55. Middle age crisis, they called. That's how his own manifested. So we preached, eh? I preached the same one of my life. My younger brother preached the same one of his life. To the glory of God. Wisdom came. My father got born again out of that experience. Because when we finished, he now told my sister who was in school who was not there, that, hey, that, do you know what happened to me? 
Because my sister went to church. She came to home from school on Sunday because we were Methodists originally. So she went to her Church of God mission. So she said when they were dancing in church, she looked around. She saw my father behind. She just did like this. So after service, he said, you come to church? He said, yes, so that this is where I go to now. He said, what happened? He said, you know, your siblings came one time. I thought I was reporting your mother. So when I finished reporting her, he said, your sister preached, your brother preached. Hey, he said, I felt sorry for your senior brother. I just said, God, please, whatever these ones have found, please let that one follow, I'm fine. And the next day, he carried himself to this church. He didn't want to go to Methodist, went to this church. He said, when I went, when I told the pastor my story, it's as if somebody had gone and reported me to the pastor. So therefore, I've decided to repent. Praise the name of the Lord. Middle age. The guy is going through the crisis. The lady is going through the crisis. It will affect the marriage. So you have to know the season that you are in and how the season can impact your marriage. And you have to manage those seasons. Seize them. And between the two of you, you can hold each other's hands through those seasons. Praise the name of the Lord. So you must understand, managing the seasons of life and the cycles of marriage will help you to live happily ever after. Because seasons come and go anyway. Praise the name of the Lord. When you've made peace with yourself, like me, I've made peace with myself. I'm enjoying. In fact, my best years just started. Hallelujah. Next law, and I'm, I'll soon be done. Controller. Go. Next one. The law of nurture. The key word for marriage is work. Hard work. Hallelujah. You have to work. I have my byline is, if you work on your marriage, your marriage will work for you. Good marriage doesn't happen. If you see a good marriage, somebody is working or the two people in agreement are working. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't walk in, she didn't iron my dress, didn't wash my underwear, didn't cook the food right, didn't sleep well, didn't do this, that, that, that. Shopping list, what of my own have you asked me, the one you have done or you don't do? Everybody has to work. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Marriage is a living thing. Anything that is living that is not nurtured will die. That's why the marriages end first 10 years. Because if you have a baby in your hand, you are not giving the right dose of milk, the, the right dose of sleep, comfort, that child can die in your hands. That's why a lot of marriages die first 10 years. Because somebody is not nurturing it. Praise the name of the Lord. The principle of nurture has not been observed. Praise the Lord. I read this. You know, I read this just last week. Um, this lady, her name is Genesis. She's a therapist. She opted to stay single, you know, just to underscore the point of men. She opted that she's 31 or that she's not going to marry. And this is what she had to say. A lot of times in relationships, you need to make sacrifices. You don't have any sacrifices to make when you are on your own. You make all decisions. If you feel like you want to change your friends, you want to move, you want to start from zero, whatever you think is a radical change that needed in your life, you have the full liberty to do that and not worry about anyone else. Praise the Lord. New York Times, it's just last week I read that in New York Times. It says, I've opted to stay single because I'm not ready to sacrifice or worry about anyone else. But marriage is a call to sacrifice. And if you want it happily ever after, you have to be ready to sacrifice. And the place of sacrifice is the place of blood, is the place of pain, the place you go through the crucible. And that's what marriage is all about. Because it's a mixed bag. Hallelujah. You come an empty carton. Whatever you put there is what you get out. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the law of sacrifice, working out a marriage is that satisfying. And it takes incredible time, energy, in one word, sacrifice. If you are not ready 
to sacrifice. Some people say they are not ready. They are not even ready. Somebody's wife, you know, uh, I think, darling, you were telling me, one of his spiritual sons, he lives abroad in England. He got sick, very sick. You know what? He was in oxygen in the hospital. His wife said, I didn't bargain for this. I'm going. And he le she left. Hallelujah. Happily ever after. That was what she wanted. She didn't bargain for sickness. Hallelujah. Amen. Next law. The last one is the law of understanding your spouse. Understanding the one you have married. And how does this law go? Whose job? You know, we have said that marriage is hard work. Eh? I said a hard work. The law of understanding who you married. If she wounds, then she wounds. Praise the Lord. If she wounds or he wounds, he wounds. So don't beat your head against the wall or against the pulpit. He will not. Praise the Lord. You know, darling here, he bossed out when he was single. He used to cook very well. Praise the Lord. Okay. You know, so he said, I, I used to cook as a bachelor. Every time I said, one day, try and cook here. Now let us uh, be testing this food. He said, ah, I used to cook. Ah, give me food. You've been doing younger. I used to cook as a bachelor. I said, cook now. So one day, like, so he just went on holiday. And then he said to my children, I'm going to fry egg for you guys. So they all came and then he fried the egg. When I think I had gone out, when I came back, hey, 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 mommy, hey, mommy, the egg, oh, the milk, the, 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 the oil was more than the egg, mommy. We couldn't eat it. I said, your daddy is a, a good cook. You know? So he will not cook. So I will not say you must cook. I will not say because Pastor Femi said, Maureen, my love, that you will serve me breakfast in bed. I think I'll just be sick. Mm. So if he wounds, his own is, he doesn't know and he's too old to learn new tricks. So I can live with that happily. Happily. I prefer the food well cooked anyways. So I, I can't force him to try to impress me. So that one, he will, not because he doesn't want to, but he doesn't know to. Praise the Lord. So if you marry the one that doesn't know to or doesn't even want to, ah, you have carried her and you have carried him. So no human being can change another one. So don't say, hey, you must change him. In this house, you must change. You say you don't know how to cook. You know, there are some things I even try to cook. I Google it. They show me when I cook my own. Eh? I've been trying to cook off a nubo. Eh? But every time I cook, my own doesn't smell like the one. And I'm wondering. So if he says this is the food he must eat. Eh? Okay, let me tell you the life example. Thank God for Google, everything. So in those days, we didn't have Google. He will say, hey, this person's birthday is next month. So I say, okay, I will remember. I will write it in my diary. The day will come and pass. <laughs> the day, you didn't remember? I said, I didn't remember. This thing went on and on and on. Every time quarrel over birthday. I said, is it not even my birthday? You know that I can't remember. So you that you remember, try and be keeping the book. Who said Namigo the keep book of birthday now? Mm. So now Facebook does the job. In fact, I think they even tell you the day before, so tomorrow you won't for it. Eh? But you know, I could have left him. I say, this guy is, ah, leave my space. You put me under pressure because of other people's birthday. Am I my mother? Eh? So, if the one you carry will not, don't beat yourself. Eh? Stay put there and be doing it. Praise the Lord. The feat of changing somebody who is set on his ways. It's only two people, either that person or God. God has been known to change people to act in a way they don't want to act. Praise the Lord. So if your spouse will not do it, if someone has to do it, then that person must be you. Please tell somebody, that person must be Say so we want to live happily ever after now. You understand the person you marry. On this note, I'll, I'll, I'll round up on the laws. You know, 
Dr. Onuzo was, you know, you know Dr. Onuzo was telling us a story of a couple who came to him for counseling. It was the lady that came. He said, can you bring your husband? He won't come. So he said, he looked at her and said, lady, you see this marriage? For this marriage to survive, somebody has to eat poo Somebody. Because when you hear somebody, ah, me, I can't take nonsense from anybody. The person never marry. Because if you marry, you have to take nonsense uh, sometimes. You know? So he, said, so he said to the lady that this marriage, for it to work, somebody has to eat this poo And as I see that your husband, oh, he's not ready to eat it. So, sister, that means if you want it, oh, you have to eat it. She looked him in the face and said, me too. I'm not ready to eat it. And the marriage died. Praise the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the laws. The, the list is not exhaustive. I have, I've passed 30 minutes. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a whole day talk. It's a whole day talk. It is possible to live happily ever after you've said, I do. But for it to happen, the answer is in your hands. The cards are on your table. The laws are there. The rules are there. The principles are there. And to whosoever will, they get the results that they desire. But my prayer for you is that you will play it God's way and you will get God's results in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, my time is up. I think we have questions and answers. I've gotten some questions um, that I believe with this talk, some of those questions must have been addressed. But when is Q and A time? We can take some, you know, questions and answers.